The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Hi, welcome to the Cashman Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. I think you're going to like this one here because it applies to all our lives. And, and this is about epigenetics. What do I mean by that? Upon your genes. Actually, you know, we have a, about 23 genes, about, about, about 46 chromosomes, actually. Uh, so, but... And they determine uh, how we look, how we see the, our size, our eye color. Uh, they determine every single thing. Uh, but you would think we would dominate the rest of nature, actually an earthworm. Uh, but altogether, we may have about 30,000 genes, okay? An earthworm, maybe get 25,000. So we're actually closely related to uh, plants and animals. But the, the fascinating thing is uh, that our genes have things at the end called telomeres. Telomeres. And that's what this show uh, will be all about. They are an extension of your genes. You can't change your genes a lot, but you can actually, we come to find out now, uh, can uh, change our telomeres. That's our latest discovery. And these uh, telomeres have a, a certain length to them, okay? And every time our cells, our major cells divide, uh, the, the telomere shortens a little bit. And, and they, what they have found out, uh, that they can look through an electron microscope and they can see the uh, chromosomes cross each other. Uh, and you know the Watson and Crick discovery in 1954, uh, which uh, discovered the helix uh, through electron microscopy uh, and through uh, radioactive uh, uh, studies that we thought that our genes determine everything that happens to us. All certain cancers, one gene, and there are a few cancers like that, but it turns out the majority of cancers have many different types of genes. So the gene theory, which we thought would take over all of medical science, actually didn't turn out that way. And that we have, and they find out now, uh, that we have these extension like shoelaces, like shoelaces at the end of our chromosomes, uh, and that and they can be influenced by what we eat, how much exercise we have, how much stress we have in life. Uh, and as we get a day older, they find out that the people older have shortened telomeres. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the point is we like to keep them long uh, and uh, we like to even maybe uh, grow them longer so we live longer. And that's what the show is all about. How, so how does this pronounce? Telomeres. I mean, it spells uh, just like my, my book here, which uh, uh, I refer to a lot, the telomere effect, is actually pronounced telomere, okay? Uh, like there's two E's there, telomere. And uh, uh, 
And what are they consistent of? Uh, segments of DNA, but that they are not coded. Our, gen our genetics really uh, is, a, is a code. And, and in each cell, we have a DNA inside the nucleus, okay? And, if the, and there's a script written on it. And if you were to unroll the whole script, uh, it's ATCG repeated many times uh, the script that really that would reach all the way to the moon in one cell. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's all the uh, micro size. It's all alterations. ATCG determines our DNA. Uh, DNA. But uh, at the end, uh, remember, we talk about uh, telomeres at the end. So they reveal the rate of aging. You get short telomeres, you, you're going to die uh, young. So but it's a dynamic process. You can shorten it by what you do, or you can lengthen it by what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're eating, how much exercise, how much stress. A mother, for example, raising four or five kids and it's a very stressful life. They found out her t uh, telomeres shorten. So we need to teach her how to relax and smile a lot. Maybe dance a little. Maybe take a walk with the dog, <laughs> with the kids at home. <laughs> okay, many different ways. Uh, so uh, this is even in science. This is even more specific than our biome. You've heard me on other shows talking about the bacteria that occupy our whole gut. The trillions of live bacteria that live there, but the telomeres. Uh, taking you down to the molecular level, even further down into the uh, science. You can, uh, about the biome, you can learn a lot about that by looking at my old uh, YouTube shows, Rudy Cashman, uh, uh, Biome. And it, so I, I'm bringing you into the science a little bit. Why am I doing that? Because you're a scientist? No, because the knowledge I'm giving you will make you healthy and look good and live to be a hundred looking like a kid. It can be done. Depends on uh, your biome and your telomere length. Okay, so let's go on the road. <laughs> let's keep on traveling uh, on the road. So, uh, and, and actually what grandma and grandpa did, they developed a certain genetic structure certain amount of telomeres, and, uh, and, uh, the, the, and your parents were born, your mother and father, they have a certain genetic scripts, and then they marry, and then, then the eggs are is fertilized, and then is put uh, in, inside the belly cavity of the mother, uh, and, and, and the uterus, and it expands, and we can affect the genetic script of the baby living with in there. When you are born, you have a certain genetic st uh, structure, but you still have about 5% left that can be influenced uh, by what, how stressful uh, the mother is, whether she's listening to music all the time. Remember, you heard about the Mozart effect. All that helped write the genetic script. And that's what happened actually to Mozart. His parents uh, played uh, violin and music and uh, while he's still in the uterus and when he was born, maybe that's the reason he, he had this musical brain. You can do this actually to your child. It'll be different, differently expressed in, in every child. So uh, the, uh, but, uh, so the, the uh, script is written, it's, it's like a platform, okay? Uh, like you build a building and you see the steel and all that's uh, set. Uh, but the details of the building, what furniture you put, it, put in it, uh, uh, what kind of a roof you got, all those things are affected by, it can be different from person to person. It, this is the same with your genetic scripts and your telomeres. Uh, so um, we have a, 
a health span, okay, but we also have a disease span. Starting around age 45 or so, you know, if you look at a graph, uh, and all of a sudden at 45, people start dying, and it depends, and, and, and the death rate goes up, but it, it really depends on the habits uh, of that individual. So number one in the, in the uh, participation of, of wellness is you must participate uh, in it, and, and that your habits, uh, what your family does, what you're eating, the exercise, whether you taking music lessons, uh, 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 whether you're just laying down and eating uh, sugary foods all day and watching TV, they will write the tel telomere, uh, the DNA, uh, and they may shorten or they may lengthen. So you can affect your health uh, tremendously, whether you have a, a stressful lifestyle or you're dancing down the road, okay? There are about 300,000 people in the world that are centenarians that live past 100, but they're thinking people know more about nutrition now, and, and the number probably is going to be bigger. At least that's my plan. <laughs> I'm 39 this next month for the 47th time. See what does that add up to? Okay, play pickleball every day like I did today, take tap dance lessons, weigh 135 pounds. So are my telomeres longer than people age 39 for the 47th time next month? Uh, probably so, but, but I don't know. At least I'm, I'm trying. I, I'm trying to be an example for you. I do what I teach, and I didn't know all this. I just developed this knowledge over time, and I'm gaining more knowledge by reading probably a book every three days, 2,000 books in my basement. I'm teaching, I'm using my brain. I'm not a neurosurgeon anymore. I quit that about seven, eight years ago, but I teach wellness and different things. I have a purpose in life. So as those of you watching, uh, I think it's good to develop a purpose in life. Uh, if uh, aging really is quite slow, the telomeres can be kept long, so you must develop a positive thought about uh, getting a, a day old, older. A lot of people live into the role. They're older and they sit down. They don't exercise anymore. They don't use the brain much anymore. They don't, they don't uh, uh, read. They don't pl uh, play a sport and guess their telomeres are shortening much faster versus a person uh, uh, that is very active exercise, excess music, and play sports, it's going to have taller, longer telomeres and he will live longer. Are you getting, are you getting uh, the point? Uh, in 1961, a biologist named Leonard Hayflick, okay, Hayflick uh, discovered uh, that normal human cells can divide a finite number of time, a finite number of times, so only a certain number of times, and about 51 times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, mitosis uh, divide, and then the person uh, passes away. But then he uh, also uh, discovered uh, the uh, telomeres, uh, and uh, that you can make them longer by doing some of the things which I spoke about. And uh, uh, so, um, so aging and disease sort of go together, but a lot of that can be prevented by learning what is good food. Eating sugar all day, probably you're not going to live very long, okay? We'll speak more about that. Um, and uh, sugar is the bugger and the hooker. Uh, Drinking sugary drinks is the new smoking. Remember, they proved smoking uh, was a killer. They, they knew it for years, but they proved it in the 1960s or so. The head of public health came out and finally admitted it. Uh, they were bribed many years not to say anything about it. But uh, uh, so the telomeres are like shoelaces on your shoes. And at the end, they have uh, what are called 
aglets, A-G-L-E-T-S, that kind of holds them uh, together uh, so they don't just fall off and spray apart. Uh, this is real, really seen through an electron microscope. Like a newborn might have 10,000 base pairs of DNA uh, that tell me at the end of the chromosomes, every chromosome in your body, every cell has these. Okay? And uh, at age 35, maybe 7,500 base pairs of DNA in there. At 65, maybe 4,800. Okay, but, but what can uh, make the telomeres shorter? Remember I mentioned st stress, type of food you're eating, you're eating nothing but sugar, you're going to shorten them pretty quick. Uh, a lot of children at home, stress uh, uh, to the whole family. So uh, how the mother and father treat you, treat each other, uh, whether they are teaching you as a child to teach, to eat the right food, to teach uh, you to cook, for example. I would highly recommend teaching children uh, to cook, to involve with the family, teach them what good food is, uh, and then they won't be eating in fast food restaurants all the time and eating processed food, a food that, that has had the good food removed and you're eating enough from red sugar and the booger and getting unhealthy at a young, young um, uh, age. Uh, incidentally, birds, fish, mice, animals, they have telomeres too. But they don't generally get stressed as much as we do. It's kind of interesting because I, every morning I'm up at five reading and I have bird food to say, and I look at the animals behave and, and, I, and I notice they all hug each other and love each other and really they look after each other. I, I see it every morning. I, I see the little ducks, the little geese. Animals just worry about staying alive, uh, eating food and reproducing. That's all they worry about. But we get a frontal lobe on top of that. We worry about a lot more things uh, uh, than that. So uh, if you look, you have an alumni meeting, for example, in, in high school, and, and you get together, uh, and you go to college, and you have a reunion, and you look around, you can see that people are uh, going, going on in years, and their telomeres are, are shortening, some a lot more than others. Some look uh, unhealthy. And certainly, here's one good one for you. When I was in my late 40s, although I, I had pretty good health habits, my hair turned gray. And I really thought, I even visited my relatives in Germany, and they, they were shocked because I was this blonde, this blonde kid. But now that I've lived a lot of years since age 49, and I, I'm glad to read in this telomere book that that actually uh, is normal. It's not can be normal for some people. It's not a sign of aging. If the hair turns like that in your 30s or 20s, then it is some sort of a genetic disease. But it, yeah, and there are types, there is a genetic disease where you have no telomeres, and those people uh, look like they're 90 in their 20s, and they die young. That's a genetic disease, but fortunately it's very rare. Uh, so you can determine your telomere length by by, by healthy foods and exercise and nutrition and, 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 and uh, reduce stress and staying active and doing things that builds telomere uh, length. Uh, you could imagine smoking shortens it pretty quickly. Very, if, if you're still part of that 20% of kids that smoke and, and adults maybe 7 to 18 stop doing it because the, the uh, uh, nicotine and sure there's sugar in cigarettes you won't believe it read Gary Tom's book there's a chapter in it there's sugar in cigarettes and I didn't even know it's the nicotine or the sugar uh, but uh, um, uh, of course cancer is the big one besides lung cancer smoking causes 12 12 other cancers and I know of someone recently that I've been, been uh, a friend who developed uh, cancer of the bladder and, and many years ago, smoker. In my lifetime, I smoked maybe one-third of one cigarette. I, I, 
I don't think I'm that smart. I'm just glad I made that decision. I coughed all night. Maybe that's the reason. My roommate in high school, too, he coughed all night. Maybe we'd, maybe uh, God did it. I don't know, but that's all. So if you're doing it, stop it. There's so much cancer related to it, uh, and bad ones, too, uh, pancreatic cancer, kidney cancers. And uh, so, as I mentioned, you can determine your, uh, t tell them your length. Uh, but, they, but different cells in your body behave differently. There's, there's some cells in your body, uh, and they also, their uh, molecules also have telomeres on them uh, that, uh, that don't live very long. For example, your uh, bacteria in your gut, your trillions of bacteria, about 10 trillion that determine your gut, your biome, you know what the lifespan is? 20 minutes. But still, they have telomeres, uh, and, and, and the length can be determined by what you feed them, okay? Our endothelium, which is one layer thick, that lines your gut, that protects you against things going into your bloodstream, lifespan 24 hours. Uh, so uh, there are proliferative cells, okay? And they're also in your immune system, bones, lungs, liver, skin, hair follicles, pancreas, some of the, end, the endovasculature, the inner lining of your blood vessels. So those, those cells live and die uh, quickly, but, but you can influence them by uh, what you, you're eating and they're very, uh, in what you're doing. And, and the same is with your, your brain. Uh, your memory and your hippocampus and your emotions and your hippocampus are indeed uh, affected by your activities. Uh, so it's important to develop uh, good habits. So uh, uh, aging is also called progressive functional impairment. <laughs> okay. As people get older, remember, uh, and I remember giving a lecture uh, at uh, Indiana Tech, I think it was, to the whole, no, to a high school, to a whole bunch of students, they collected them from all the high schools that were smokers. There's about 50 kids in the room, they're all smokers. They, they gave up on them, they wanted myself and, and uh, I think it was Phil Pano, we sp spoke to them about stopping smoking and, and, and you wonder what might influence them and there was, and, and some of the girls were concerned about how they look. Uh, you can, uh, smokers live, about, look about 10, 20 years older than they are because the effects uh, of that on their telomeres of their skin. Yeah. The epidermis and dermis uh, uh, shrivels up uh, and they look a lot older. And if you're looking at somebody that you know is 60, uh, it, it, it say is 40 and they look like they're 60, they're smokers. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to uh, give it up. Things also affected uh, uh, but tell me a length, uh, uh, things that turn over quickly like bones, uh, uh, skin, uh, and graying hair does have something to do with it, but if it turns all gray it, at a young age, it's, it, it, Usually is normal, and uh, so. But generally, looking older, they have shorter uh, telomeres. Uh, other things they do it is inflammation. You can be uh, eating inflammatory foods. You could uh, be drinking uh, liquid uh, sugars, uh, and and they affect your telomeres. Uh, so, uh, and uh, if you have inflammation in your body, which you can check by test called CRP. C-reactive protein, uh, that can tell you how much inflammation in your body, mine, I, I noticed was less than one. Uh, what I preach, I test myself for and, and I practice. Uh, and uh, that's fertile ground for cancer. Cancer, 80% of the time, is related uh, to what you're eating, uh, uh, your uh, uh, telomeres, 
uh, and, and uh, sugar, especially through the Warburg effect. Cancer is a sugar feeder. To make one ATP, one molecules of energy, takes 13 molecules of sugar versus one and one. So uh, most breast cancer is, is related to being overweight or having type 2 diabetes. 20% of thin looking people still have diabetes, so get your blood check, blood sugar, serum, insulin, and uh, the, uh, so telomere shortening results in senescence, yeah, get, getting older, and inflammation. Remember I mentioned the CRP test? Uh, it also affects the endothelium, the inner layer of your blood vessels, uh, and to have inflammation in them is related to shortened uh, telomeres. The first thing to go from getting older or if you have inflammation in your uh, body is the ears. Mm -hmm. Next is your eyes. And I, uh, the Lions Club has contacted me because they hand out free glasses all over the world and they have noticed that the majority of them are diabetics who get a lot of vascular disease. Absolutely, it makes perfect sense to me. So I'm going to try to get them to lengthen their telomeres by proper activities um, and, and uh, by eating the right food, not smoking, uh, for, for example. It can affect the, the brain also uh, because insulin, which puts the sugar into the cell, is related to a kind of food that, you, that you're eating, and you can develop a memory loss, dementia, uh, depression, uh, from improper lifestyle. And uh, so uh, for, a healthier, for a healthier old age, which I guess I represent, you know, 39 years old next month for the 47th time, but feel great. I played pickleball today and I'll play it again tomorrow against some pretty tough guys. Uh, change how you think. A lot of people as they get on an age and get, get a day older, they think like, uh, or um, I'm going to die soon, and and uh, uh, and there are ethnic groups and racial groups that eat the wrong food. It's not because of a certain color; they're eating the wrong food. No one in the school system, or maybe the parents, has been teaching them what the right food is. Sometimes it's not available. Sometimes they can't afford it. But the biggest thing uh, is. Uh, we, I think, as children in the school system, and I'm meeting with the head of Fort Wayne educational system in the near future. I spoke to the last one, and she was not interested in changing. We teach kids about what proper food is. They, they uh, do not know. And uh, so, uh, uh, so a lot of people live into the role. They're getting older. And they live into the world. You know what I, I know from my research that if we work on our, our telomeres and health habits, probably could, most of us can live past 100. Mm -hmm. I mean, someday we're all going to die. But what I want you, you to do is to live past 100 and to be healthy, to look like a young kid. It can be done. It can be done. Remember, I'm 39 for the 47th time, but I walked a prominent park. There's no question. Girls talk to me a lot. Who would think a guy my age, girls would talk to me? Yes. I'm not living into the role. I'm smiling back. Maybe part of it is because I wear fancy, colorful clothes. I suggest that, too. Wear colorful clothes uh, uh, is it, something I have uh, uh, teach quite a bit. Uh, a lot of people don't even realize the age. If you dress, probably don't dress like you're half dead. Dress like you're 20. People will not notice your age, especially if you're smiling, which reminds me, brush your teeth a couple of times a day at least. Sugar is the one that destroys your teeth. I didn't know that, frankly, until I was way into college. When one of my fraternity brothers says, Rudy, the girls are coming in tonight. Well, uh, brush your teeth. 
That's the first time I knew to brush my teeth. My parents didn't push it at me. Brush your teeth. Uh, and I say twice a day at least. When, when you get up, when you go to bed, some people will say three times. I think that's, a, that's very important and you won't need to see the dentist uh, very often. Uh, so, and, and if you practice uh, using your memory, reading books, speaking to people, uh, we all lose some memory as we get a day older, but don't concentrate on it. If someone comes up to you, doesn't know your name or things like that, and you can learn memory trips yourself. I'll learn some of them. Associate uh, what you heard with something else it's called association, you're much more likely to know it. So um, people uh, who keep their telomeres long by their activities on the average live seven to 10 years longer than most people. Yeah. And I think some could, I think we have not fully developed the power of that. Um, a few years later, uh, they discovered telomerase telomerase. That's, that's an enzyme uh, and repeating uh, uh, DNA that appears to be able to uh, repair uh, telomeres. Yeah, as a shortening, as the age go on, we can lengthen them again. And, and you hear the words methylization. Um, that, that, that is CH3 uh, and that turns off the and chemicals that make telomeres shorter. Mm -hmm. the, then there are histones, which turn on chemicals that make your telomeres longer. So you hear about methylization and histones. It's some of the science. I just want you to know you heard it. You don't have to remember, memorize this. So the telomeres are, are protectors of our chromosomes. They're, they're sheaf um, over, over then. Uh, and, and remember, inside the cell are the, the 46 chromosomes, uh, 23 pairs, uh, and, uh, and the t uh, telomeres are like a code that protects the cell. And, uh, and at, at the end of the chromosomes, remember I mentioned that they're at the end. Uh, so it's the people with longer telomeres who are living into the 80s, 90s, and maybe into the 100s, and maybe in the future, 105. We know a few made 110, but let's just aim for 100. We'll just pick a number. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I visualize in myself, hey, I'll be happy with 100. I'll be tap dancing when I'm 100 with you. <laughs> and uh, so, the telomere race um, replenishes t the telomeres, okay? And uh, uh, so telomere race uh, is the solution to telomere shrinkage, okay? So it creates new telomeres, patterns, uh, and, and, and uh, based on chemistry, uh, methylization, uh, uh, and... Uh, uh, so it is the enzyme responsible for restoring the DNA lost during cell division. I think you now know what telomerase is, what that enzyme uh, is. And uh, so how we respond to stress, we're all going to have stress. I mean, life is not like this. You know, it's like, oh, my life is like that, that too. But how we react to it determines what stress level we experience in our body. Yeah, and your cells are listening to your thoughts. Your cells are listening to your thoughts. Every cell is affected by how you think. So, uh, and uh, for example, in my house, I have, I had two cats and, and, and and uh, Braveheart and Fritzy. Fritzy died a few months ago, but he was 20 years old. Yes, way beyond the lifespan, but he presented a lot of love to my body. He sleeps right here. And, and one morning, <laughs> this one, 
one morning lately, you know, I didn't feel right. I thought my heart was racing. I don't know what it was. And he already had left my bed and was downstairs, I think, eating something. He comes racing up the stairs, jumps on my chest, puts his body right there. You know what I'm thinking? Is that his heart rate came within sync of my heart rate. I really do. I calmed down and, and I was fine. <laughs> I thought you'd find that interesting. So having a pet or a dog, I think, is a good thing besides a, a loving wife and loving children. And, and uh, uh, I think uh, that's a good one. Uh, so, uh, so like I said, stress shortens the telomeres. And uh, so the, we're having an epigenetic revolution. People are becoming aware of this. Not many people know about this, but it's a step ahead of the biome. We, it's further into the uh, chemistry. Uh, your DNA, remember I said it, that determines what you look like, every organ of your body, the color of your eyes, color of your hair. But, but that's a template, okay? That's a set thing. And about 98% of that is set. There's only 2% that's left, which ha but you can write the script. Okay, remember the very famous uh, movies or plays or operas, but you see them again 30 years later. I mean, essentially the, the main parts are the same but there's a different script. You can write the script of your telomeres. Is it gonna be a healthy one? You're gonna die young? Remember I said there are certain uh, racial groups, ethnic groups that, that uh, I know uh, in California, Loma Linda University and Steve Gundry, a cardiologist who did heart transplants on newborns and adults. Can you imagine that? Yes, 15 years. Can you imagine what he knew? I wonder if he's not the most intelligent medically person in the world. He quit his practice and moved to California and Arizona and opened it. He said, you know, uh, I decided all the people I was operating on, was a, they got their disease as a result of poor lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Steve Gundry, read his books. I mean, can you, can you believe that? So. He was operating on people who would have poor genetic scripts determined by their parents, their, their own habits. Yes, he was operating on the damaged genetic scripts. So he opened up his practice, honest to himself, opened up uh, a uh, wellness, started writing uh, many books. I've read every down one of them. He's on, on YouTube also, and he himself, had a poor genetic script. Yes, at age 50, he looked himself in the mirror and saw he had a poor genetic script, Start, started uh, changing his telomeres and lengthening his telomeres again and became a healthy, see him on YouTube, Steve Gundry, very healthy uh, individual. I congratulate him. And what's nice about it, he didn't just keep his mind, just said, no, 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 I can't learn nothing new, I'm right, I'm right, no. He was open-minded, and when new facts came up, he changed. I really find that uh, interesting. Uh, so uh, the script you write uh, can be different of what you were handed already, uh, certain genetic, uh, certain number of genes, uh, but they have these telomeres, and you can change the script that's written on the telomeres. That's what I'm saying to you. And uh, so the epigenetics affects the interpretation of DNA genetic sequencing at, at the cellular level. It, there's not a change in the DNA, but it's a change in the interpretation with, uh, of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is sort of the interesting geologist, you know, we studied uh, the earth and the, and the body, believed 250 million years ago uh, that we had one land mass, one single continent, but two land masses. 
the Asian, African Asian, and the American landmass. Uh, they knew that, and 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 they uh, found out there were totally different cultures, different plants, uh, uh, different genetic uh, structure. Uh, for example, corn was grown in the Americas, not not in Europe. The potatoes uh, uh, came from the from the uh, Americas. Uh, tobacco came from the Americas. Then Columbus, you know. Uh, Took a, took a long trip, a couple of years, came back. And you know, a year later, he took that trip again, but this time took with him about 200 other ships. Yes, that's all summarized in a book called 1489 by Charles Mann, M-A-N-N, -N, I believe. And uh, I've not read that, but I'm gonna order that, uh, where what in essence they did is brought a lot of the the, the, the plants and the vegetables and, uh, and the animals and the fish and the, and the viruses and the bacteria and brought them back to Europe. And these two parts of the world that were different started becoming more the same. They brought back the good and the bad. They brought back tobacco. I don't think that was, too, that was really too good, <laughs> okay. And, uh, uh, in 1968, John Wallach, W-A-L-L-A-C-H, who represents the Center for the Biology of Natural Systems, did some experiments and he, he, he studied epigenetics uh, in ducks. He took them and fed them different things and began to realize, uh, it depended on the type of food he was giving them to determine, determine their health. And this neat thing too was, when the Japanese came to this, this, this country, the average height was four foot 11, and they weighed 100 pounds, okay? Then they started eat, eating the American diet, and the Japanese diet was low calorie, low nutrient, okay? Then they started, and they had some rice and vegetables and fish. They were here, barely a generation or two, and they would have a, one of them had a six foot four son weighing 240 pounds. He played tight end for USC. What happened? They're the same genes, same genes, but the telomeres changed by the health habits, okay? He had access to unlimited calories, which in Japan they did not have. Also, he, that, that man drank a lot of milk, a lot of protein, and he grew to a tremendous height. So that was not change of the genes, it was change of the telomeres. Uh, and, and remember, we spoke about the Columbus Exchange, that was called, uh, where Columbus on his second trip, and here is confirmed 1493 book, Charles Mann. I'm gonna order it tonight, because <laughs> I know quite a bit around that already in the islands and how they brought the viruses from Europe, killing off huge uh, populations in Haiti, for example, just wiped them out because they had no resistance to the viruses that were brought over. Uh, but we also brought some back, as well as bacteria. Uh, so um, epigenetic manifestation of, 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 of disease, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, genes, uh, there are not that many. So it's not uh, genetic diseases we're talking about. It's just like uh, they thought by doing gene research, uh, and before that we had done metabolic research. But when we started doing gene re research, they thought all the cancers would be solved by one drug to one gene. Well, it turns out breast cancer probably is 50 to 100 genes. What are you gonna give people? 100 drugs? I noticed uh, the Vera Bradley Association in town, a very nice association, real nice people. They take all the money and the fundraise that they send it to Indianapolis for gene research. That's just right on the building. That's what it says right in the building. When in reality, I think some of the money should be kept here because we could, 
uh, take advantage of telomere research and tell people uh, that 80% of the uh, cancers are related to what we're eating. So breast cancer is a lot more common in people that are overweight, men and, and women, and we should use some of that money and teach it to them. I mean, if you're worried of what I say there, and I do on a regular basis. Uh, uh, so, uh, so the nutritional status of our DNA is important, uh, and it's to, uh, to have proper DNA. For example, you got to have the right vitamins and amino acids and the proper ratio. So, uh, it's it's important. Uh, there are a few. Inborn errors of genetics. Remember, I mentioned there are some cancers related just to one to one gene, um, and one drug may solve that problem, but that's rare. But but and but but there are some metabolic problems where there are gene problems like Down syndrome, PKU, cleft palate, neural tube defects is related to taking um, uh, uh, B12 and and. Uh, uh, and the cancers are related to it, but but that's not the majority. So we need to know about genetic diseases, but most of the diseases and the cancers, for example, that diabetes, for example, are uh, related uh, to type of food we're eating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they've determined that, uh, that diabetes, Huntington's disease, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, uh, Kawasaki syndrome, a lot of cancers related to type of foods we're eating and not just a gene is how we change the telomeres. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, th th this is a very interesting thing. I'm going to read you a little quote here. And it was written by Chief Seattle. Yeah, many... Uh, Chief Seattle, and a, an Indian chief, how wise he was. Teach your children what we taught our children. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. All things are connected like the blood which runs and unites one family. Mm -hmm. Blood types are similar in families. Mankind did not weave the web of life. We are but one strand in it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. And when I think of, I put together the Magic 8 wellness wheel Years ago, Magic 8, what's number one on there? Self-responsibility, a choice. I was right. <laughs> I encourage you to get a copy of it. So all things are bound together. That's an Indian chief without a high school, undergraduate, or college education. That's what he did, determined from his life is connected to the soil. It's the soil that determines their health and it's the soil that you put in your body. I mean, very interesting quote, I thought. We generally have three cellular enemies, main ones, inflammation, okay? Uh, telomeres don't like inflammation in the body. Telomeres shorten that. And uh, so how to decrease the shortening? Stop feeding it sugar. That booger and the hooker. Sodary drinks. Sugary foods. Donuts. But nature designed it in us to eat sugary foods to keep us alive. But it used to be seasonal. But now because of processed food, it's throughout the year. It's available throughout the year. No one has brought this up, but all the fast food restaurants with one name shut down in, in, in Russia, okay? But no one mentioned in some ways 
they don't deserve to be lucky, obviously, but actually a very lucky thing. I think probably a lot more people will live because they don't have a fast food restaurant. <laughs> I hate to bring that up, but we are killing our families and children, especially the poor people, because they're eating processed food, eat food in the natural state, okay? Um, uh, so avoid sugar. Uh, avo avoid inflammatory bad fats. Uh, a lot of the meats we're eating have bad fats in them. They're good fats. In fact, the diet I recommend, the keto diet I recommend now is 50-70% good fats. Mm -hmm. uh, guacamole, uh, olive oil, for, for example. Learn what the difference is between good fats and bad fats. Bad fats are inflammatory. Are inflammatory. They have cytokines in them. They're unhealthy. And, and a good way to test for inflammation in your body is get a CRP level. I know with someone where well, it was eight and, and her doctor couldn't even figure out why it was. Well, she found out three years later why it was. Heart problem, major vascular disease. That was the problem. Her doctor did not persist uh, in, in, in checking that out. That, that's why it was elevated. Fortunately, that person is still alive. But good foods are kale and broccoli and onions and blueberries. They're, they're full of fi phytonutrients, things that make you healthy. But, but you know, 10 years ago, uh, they were teaching eat 80% of vegetables and fruit. Actually, uh, find out now that really is not correct. It's too much, too much sugar. A lot of these vegetables have been genetically modified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was done. Uh, by subsidizing the price of corn, which the government does, which makes fructose corn syrup, which is very unhealthy, and it's cheaper, and people buy it, and it, may, it stabilizes food. It doesn't rot, so there's fructose corn syrup in, in everything you put on the shelf. Mm -hmm. The government supports the price of that. That makes it cheaper, and that's not nice. Congress did it. They could change it. They could change it. So I recommend generally some fasting too. And the reason being, in that days or months, nothing. Just time space, time regulated eating. 16 hours of not eating, eight, you eat. If you do that in that 16 hours, you have autophagia going on in your body. Your body is cleansing itself. Cells are being repaired. Your telomeres are getting uh, longer. Telomerase is getting to work. And this is an excellent way to become healthy. It's called intermittent fasting, time-regulated uh, eating. That's what I do. Uh, two meals a day, that's the easiest. Uh, I, I don't eat breakfast till noon, 10 or noon or so, and then around 6 o'clock. It doesn't have to be 100%. Uh, and and uh, then if one of those two meals is like I speak about, you probably live to be 100. Uh, and uh, I don't have much appetite in the mornings because the steroids secreted by being a day, uh, by growth hormones secreted in the pituitary gland, raise your blood sugar, so your blood sugar is like this, and, and, and it doesn't go head down like that. So so I don't have much appetite till around noon or so. I paid pickleball this morning and only had to add a cup of coffee. Uh, and then I ate lunch, breakfast together, one meal. So I had intermittent fasting, really not eat again tonight. And uh, I, that's easy way, two meals a day. I highly, highly encourage uh, 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 that. Uh, so we talked about inflammation. Number two enemy, oxidative stress. Uh, uh, our, our telomeres, remember, uh, have a certain code to them, you know. Uh, remember it's CTAG, some variants uh, of that. But oxidative stress damages uh, the coding uh, of the uh, telomeres. Uh, if there's an extra electron, that uh, one will, will uh, oxidize and combine proteins and sugars and, 
and make unhealthy uh, proteins in, in, in your body, which can deposit on your blood vessels, vessels and cause vast disease, for example. Uh, so, but how do you calm oxidative st uh, stress down? By eating the right food, uh, for, for example, vitamin C and E does it. Uh, they uh, reduce uh, uh, the extra electrons floating around and causing oxidative uh, stress. And uh, so uh, the, we spoke earlier today already about uh, the baby in, in, in the uh, womb. Um, so you can influence your baby's telomeres by for example, starting at about age two or three months, the baby can hear. That's the first thing to develop uh, is the ears in a baby. So uh, the noises around them, whether you are in, whether you're playing music, whether you're playing the piano or the violin or singing them a song, um, I can influence the stress level and telomeres of the baby within you, starting at a very young age. Breastfeeding a, a child uh, uh, at least six weeks. I prefer six months, a year or two. The uh, reason being uh, is that your gut biome is not developed yet. It's not de uh, developed yet. Today, many women uh, have C-sections. But if, if they have a C-section, that baby has never gone through the birth canal and the face was not painted with some bacteria in the birth canal, which would build the child's gut. So uh, when you do a C-section, your child does not have a properly uh, developed biome. I don't think that this is discussed very much in the people that they're going to do this procedure on for which they get paid. So I don't know what they tell them to them, but I get a feeling. And the rate of C-section is going w uh, way up. Uh, and the third, uh, before I finish this talk, the third enemy is insulin resistance. Uh, so when you're drinking a lot of sugar, sugary um, drinks, uh, that's really the new smoking, uh, uh, sugary sodas, uh, that sh will shorten the telomeres very quickly. Uh, most diabetics die in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Very few live into their 80s. Uh, and, and Gundry, the cardiologist, who was at Loma Linda University, said he saw a lot of patients uh, from Los Angeles and found he rarely met a man over age 70. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's all related to this. So in summary, um, I hope I've told you a little bit, you know, I've told you before about the biome, your whole biome, you are what your gut is, but actually you are what your blood tests are, and took you further in the science and, and spoke to you about the telomeres, the strands at the end of your chromosomes, how to get, uh, how to live a longer life, to have a lot of telomeres. And I hope uh, when I reach 100, you're standing there challenging me to a game of pick a ball, you better know what you're doing, or maybe you say, would you tap dance with me? And I have a lot of experience with that, or sing a, or, or, or sing a song, or just give me a hug. <laughs> I love you, but I just want you to know, I live the life I try to teach you. Look at my other YouTube shows and TV shows and read the books I recommend, and we'll have some fun together. I love you.